Hey guys, it's Bass Kato and I'm back with another video. So let's go ahead and jump right into it. So has anybody else noticed that the number of influencers or you know people who claim they're influencers because they have over 10,000 followers and it shows the K on their Instagram profile? Like, have you guys noticed that the number of influencers has risen, it seems like exponentially within like the past year or two? And the one thing that I've noticed is that becoming an influencer technically isn't as hard as people think. You know, a lot of these people that I see nowadays, they follow the same, not everybody, but a lot of these folks follow the same cookie cutter formula to stardom or to becoming an influencer, you know, tomato, tomato. So in this video, I wanted to discuss all of the cookie cutter formulas or at least the ones I can name off the rip that a lot of people use to catapult themselves into stardom in the influencer world. And also I want to kind of discuss on the cookie cutter formula works, but long term does that, is it sustainable? So we're gonna get straight into it. So I would say the first cookie cutter formula to becoming an influencer slash someone who's really famous is A, being attractive, and then B, creating a hit song. Now, I already know the first, I feel like the first two people that come into mind when I say this is, of course, Ice Spice, and I'll put Sweetie up there too. But Ice Spice especially. So in the year 2022, like I personally, I'm not from New York, so I'm pretty sure she may have had already some type of following up there, but worldwide, or at least US wide, Ice Spice was not known. And then all of a sudden she drops this song and like she's catapulted into stardom. You thought I was feeling you? No, I was feeling you. That nigga a munch. Nigga, either he ate it for lunch. Bitch, I'm a baddie, I get what I want. Like. It's fucking with Drake. Not actually, but you know what I'm saying. Like she's with Drake, which is like an A-list celebrity. It's like, damn. But if you think about it, there were a lot of factors I feel like that led up to her type of stardom. But I would just say in general. For most people, the cookie cutter formula, the first one I would say is being attractive. Ice Spice, she's attractive, she's very beautiful. She made a bop that, you know, people will play at the club. That's the thing, like people, if you're able to make a club banger, which to me club bangers are very easy pr to produce because most people, like for example Migos, I remember um, one of the albums that they came out with like back in between like I would say 2015 to 2018 I remember them saying that they made the album within 48 hours and it's like okay if you're making club music like rap type music and it's like I don't want to put all club music down because there are some people that have really put time and effort into their art and like you hear it at the club and it's fire. But there's a lot of artists who didn't put the time and work into that song, but it still goes hard. And I feel like Ice Spice is falls into that category. I'm not trying to talk down or diminish the work that Ice Spice or other people who are just like her are doing or did to get to where they are. But I'm just saying for someone who's deemed as less attractive in society, that person just would not have experienced that amount of... They wouldn't have become an influencer that fast, basically. Like, I Spice, like, she blew up. If you aren't attractive, you're not really gonna blow up like that. You have to make a fire song to blow up. That's all I'm saying. So basically, the point is, it's very easy to be deemed as attractive, you know, make yourself more attractive, create a viral hit song, post it on TikTok, whatever you gotta do, create a dance, and go viral. And there you go. You got followers coming your way, sponsorship deals, you know, other artists wanting to collab with you. So you're set. Now, as far as longevity, music-wise, I mean, if you're not, if you 
just made the bop to become famous but you're not really into music like that like for example and i hate to say it but like i really like ruby rose but i just don't think like long term she's not trying to be making music like that long term like she may still be in the music industry maybe um behind the scenes like being producer da 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 but as far as a rapper and stuff i mean she doesn't really have to do anything else she's pretty she has her few songs and she gets sponsorship deals and from there you just have to figure out how to capitalize off of these sponsorship deals and this is where i would say sweetie comes into play because i feel like sweetie has one hell of a marketing team because she made that one hit okay let me not say she made that one hit song sweetie does have bops for sure like don't get me wrong i definitely have her music on my phone but as far as longevity sweetie is a cover artist she raps over beats that are already classics you know what i'm saying so you it, it can't really go wrong unless you just are that bad of a rapper so that's easy so for her it was easy for her to become famous a big influencer she's also very pretty um and in me i'm not trying to diminish like the hard like i said before i'm not trying to diminish the hard work that sweetie ice spice or any of these people other people like them put in behind the scenes but it's just like they still took the easy way out if you know what i mean i would say that is the first cookie cutter formula to becoming an influencer slash reaching startup so the second cookie cutter formula to becoming an influencer slash stardom is definitely becoming pregnant by a rapper or an athlete and becoming a baby mama. So the prime example I want to use for this cookie cutter formula is Ari Fletcher or the Real Kyle sister because Ari Fletcher was G Hergo's baby mama. I'm not gonna lie, I never knew who Ari Fletcher was until she was with G Herbo. Same with Jada Cheese, like she's with Little Baby. I do kind of remember seeing pictures of Jada circling around the internet like way back when, but I think even then she was still with Little Baby. Tyena, uh, G Herbo's second baby mama, like nobody knew, or at least I didn't know about her until like she didn't none of these people became mainstream until they became baby mamas of like these rappers athletes i don't really know um any athlete baby mamas but that's gonna prove my point in a minute this is the cookie cutter formula to start um only if you know how to capitalize off of it so that's why i do want to give big props to Ari and Jada because not only are they I feel like they grew out of like that baby mother title like they'll always be the baby mothers to G Herbo and Lil Baby but they have like their own shit going on like Ari Fletcher the real cow sister like she's Ari like Ari the Dawn or something like that like she's established I don't attach G Herbo to her name same with Jada Chiefs like well, I ain't gonna lie, she does talk a lot about Lil Baby. So, I mean, I kind of was still attached to Lil Baby to her, but she's built up, like, her own reputation and following and stuff to where, well, she's not with Lil Baby right now, but it's just, like, if she doesn't have to date Lil Baby ever again, she'll be well off because she's built up her own empire. Now, and mind you, like, take that with a grain of salt. Like, I really don't know how many businesses Jada or Ari have in real life. But, you know, looking at the pictures, which I know people only show what they want to show online. But they're doing a lot better than most people. I'm just saying. So, and they have a really big following. So, they definitely made a name for themselves. Like, they're definitely household names at this point, at least in the black community, or at least Atlanta black <laughs> community. Um, they were definitely able to capitalize off of being a baby mama. Um, I would put Janaea Michelle, um, I think that's her, Janaya, Janaya, um, NBA Young Boys baby mama. I would definitely put her in that category as well. Because she's, I mean, I would still 
kind of like attached in bad young boy to her but she, she, you know she's working now she's working now for this cookie cutter formula is it worth it me personally hell no because but i'm gonna play devil's advocate it depends i see why especially women because well, I'm going to say women because I'm a woman, so I can only speak on a woman's perspective. But I can see why a woman would want to have a child by a rapper or an athlete. Because in society, on social, me on social media, and because it's just like kind of a straight fact. But these people, they just have more money than like the average regular, you know, person that you'll see in, in your Target or grocery store. It just is what it is and and they're easy targets I, I think that's the main thing they're easy targets because you already know so I can see why a woman who came from nothing you know can see an athlete or a rapper as like the golden ticket if that person is rich enough you know you may be getting like a a heap of child support, like a lump sum of child support. Like I've seen some people get like twenty thousand a month, two hundred thousand a month. That's a lot of money. Like if me, I would only need just one month of child support. If I was getting two hundred thousand, I'm good because I could flip that into whatever. But I'm just saying, like some people are making a damn living off of child support. You know, I don't fault these women because I just feel like these women they just grew up in an environment to where they just don't know any better or they it, it's just a lot of factors so I can see why women do that but long term is it worth it again it depends on who you sleep with so let's move on to the third cookie cutter formula I've noticed that people use to reach to influencer status slash stardom so I actually witnessed this today. That's why I'm adding it on my list. So allegedly there's this girl on IG that is claiming Drake DM'd her or she DM'd Drake, one or the other, but she got flew out by Drake. And long story short, things didn't work out because um, she had pulled out her phone and she signed an NDNA and the NDNA says like you can't you know pull out your phone during you know the greet, meet and greet with Drake I don't know what she was doing with Drake and this is all alleged but basically he kicked her out and she had to go back home and she made a story time about it I don't know how it exactly went but it was something like she didn't want to post the receipts on her TikTok but she was like, I'll post the receipts on my Instagram. You have to follow me. I think her account was private. So like people had to follow her to watch her story. But I had posted the video on my Instagram. All the receipts is on my Instagram. So I don't got time for y'all to be like, I'm lying and all of that. Because what do I have to lie for? And that was just like a way to get herself to at least 10,000 followers. And blah, 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 blah. Anyways, I'm pretty sure that shit is fake because I was looking at her. I mean, I, I seen the video and I'm just like, yeah, you don't look like somebody Drake would be dealing with. And if he was dealing with you, I can see why he didn't want you to have your phone around him because he didn't want to be seen around you. <laughs> That's just that. But creating a scandal will definitely have your name in the blogs. Like that terrorist star girl that went to Florida A&M that posed naked in front of like their historical snake statue. Which I'm like, girl, you crazy as hell for doing that. Um, that definitely stirred up a lot of controversy. It was a scandal, controversy, whatever. It got her clout though. I see her page now and she has like, what, 40,000 followers. That's cool. I don't know if they're all active, but you know. You got what you wanted. <laughs> Another scandal I'm thinking of at the top of my head is the Travis Scott. Is, is it Sweet Row or Young Row? I don't. I think it's Sweet Rose or Sweet Row. Y'all know what I'm talking about. If you remember that scandal that happened about three months ago, where I don't even know. I don't. I, don't, I really don't feel like explaining it. But the point is, 
you know, she got the blogs talking about her, this, that, and the third. She got a following from that. And I do remember her um, or seeing a video from somebody saying that she's done this in the past multiple times. And that's pretty much what she's known for. So, yeah, creating scandals and controversies or doing controversial stuff. Just going viral in general. Like, that's definitely an easy way to stardom or becoming an influencer. Now, is it worth it long term? And my answer is it depends everything i feel like everything all depends on how you capitalize off of going viral like for example the catch me outside girl catch me outside how about that she went viral off of catch me outside but now she's just like she said for like bad baby like she's starting to only fans and now has like at least 50 million dollars that's how you take going viral to your advantage so but the average person, they're not going to know how to convert be being viral one second to longevity, like actually having a fan base the next. A lot of people don't know how to do that. That's why I say a lot of people who start controversies and stuff, they can't keep that original attention that they were getting. Like even with Krishan Rock and Blueface. When Krishan Rock kind of first came out into the media, like I'm not gonna lie, like I I mean I liked her. Not that I dislike her now, but it's just like it's getting old. Um, the sweet road thing. A lot of people didn't really believe her, or even if they did, it's kinda of like, well, you do this all the time. So like that gets old. Or like I said earlier, earlier the Tarek Star. I mean, nobody really checks for like nobody really checks for these people. Like one of the main scandals I can actually think of that actually worked long term is of course the Kim Kardashian and her sex tape scandal. But that's like a one in a million percent chance that that would happen to somebody. I feel like just because the time was right, she slept with Ray J. I mean, who has access? Who like what regular person has access to somebody like that? And Chris Jenner is just a whole nother like beast in itself so that's neither here nor there but yeah that cookie cutter formula to stardom it can work for some people but longevity you're gonna experience burnout or people are gonna be burned out of you another cookie cutter way to stardom or to becoming an influencer that I've seen is becoming a hair model like especially in Atlanta but probably just anywhere in general but there's a lot of or I've noticed that it's so weird but I just feel like people who wear wigs or get their hair professionally done by hairstylists that also do other celebrity people like celebrity hair somehow like you just become an influencer off of that like you start to get hair sponsorships and this that and the third so that's kind of an easy way to become an influencer you know just going to uh hairstylists that do bigger celebrities and influencers because what happens is that hairstylists they'll end up posting you on their page because that's their work and if they tag you or people find out what your profile is and you're cute they're going to get followers also, if you tag the hair company, of course, the hair company is going to see that and they're going to DM you and offer you, you know, hair for a promo, this, that, and third. So I can see how that can jumpstart your influencer career. Like, I've definitely seen a lot of small YouTube channels where they'll do hair reviews and the hair reviews definitely get way more views than anything else, which I get it because... If I'm a consumer and I'm going to be purchasing hair, I want to see what it looks like on somebody else. So of course I'm going to look up videos of other people doing hair reviews in the and third. So I, I would say that's the cookie cutter formula to becoming an influencer. Now would you be like a worldwide known influencer in the and third? No. <laughs> No, you gotta add some type of other value to the community to become like more popular. Um, but as far as like an easy way to become locally popular, that's that's definitely a cookie cutter formula. Okay, y'all. So that's pretty much it. That's 
the things that I came up with as far as cookie cutter formulas to becoming an influencer or reaching stardom. Oh, by the way, this is not a commentary channel. Like, I'm not a commentator. I just wanted to talk about this particular topic because, I don't know, it's just something I wanted to talk about. It's interesting. I've seen all of these little cookie cutter type formulas that everyone not everyone but people some people follow that it just reaches them to that influencer type stardom every time and it's just like it's like yeah i could definitely follow those formulas to reach the influencer world or stardom but is that truly who i really am because at the end of the day, if you don't like what you're doing, it's, it's like, if you don't like what you're doing, like, it's not going to work out long term. Anyways, hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. Make sure to like and subscribe, and I'll see you guys in my next one.